Welcome to Debriefed. Today let's talk about the bow and how it works. You have this great way of splitting up the different techniques into three categories. Could you explain and demonstrate them for us? You know, the combination, combinations of bowings are infinite and the combinations of bowing even within each of these groups are infinite and uh, the variety within these groups is quite staggering. My definition of the legato type of bowing is the kind of bowing where there is no break between notes. Now, I can do it on two strings. I can also do it skipping a string. This is all legato, all legato bowing. Some on the same string, some on adjacent strings, some uh, uh, shorter notes, like here. This is still this legato type of bowing. There's no break between notes whatsoever. By the way, and that will come as a surprise to many of you, that by my definition, uh, the legato type of bowing extends from the very long sustained note. Those sounds like all the way to the tremolo. Why? Because the tremolo does not have break between its each and every note, and therefore uh, it is. It belongs. It be belongs logically into this type of bowing. By the way, when you write tremolo, please, for God's sake, don't mark it at the tip. I know it's at the tip. We all know it's at the tip. Where would I? What else would I be doing? You know. Uh, I, I did mention things like that no, already in the. In the yeah, it's, it's, it is yeah. absolutely uh, unnecessary. One, uh, just remember, we read like this, and if you if you have a litany of. Uh, bodily functions written there and including slurs and stuff and like then I have to read like that it slows me down uh, we read so fast that for instance when we turn pages it's a bar or two before we got to the end of the mm -hmm. page that's how we read that's right. that's 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 the only way to do it in the studio once uh, you have uh, all kinds of expressions and uh, you know, evocations and whatever, that is in the way. It's in the way. So what do you think about people marking up bows and down bows? In a I part? would say as a whole, don't. It's not, not necessary. Uh, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it, that, that belongs to the, to the domain of the string player. Uh, I'm not even talking about, like, for instance, if you play in a large hall, you bow one way. If you play in a studio, you bow another way simply because carrying is not an issue. That's one thing I have noticed a lot recently. Yeah. I've been watching, uh, you know, whether it's the LA Phil or yeah. watching YouTube clips of yeah. orchestras and then watching you guys in the studio. Yeah. And there are way more bow changes in the symphony than yeah. there are in the studio. That's right, because they have to, they, they have to produce the sound. My sound has to reach all the way from here to, to this mic here. Right. Uh, they have to reach you on the third floor in the back because you right. paid. You have to hear that thing. So yes. That's that's a very very different thing. It's different business. So now, so that's we've basically covered the legato. Yes. Now let's move on to the short note, the short staccato note. bowing. Staccato bowing. Okay. Well, staccato bowing is is the the basic staccato. You call it staccato. I call it staccato. No, uh, staccato is is martelli. We call it martelli. That means one staccato note on a bow. And it sounds like so. What happens here, you are playing a fast bow, 
moving it fast, and then you have to stop the bow. The bow doesn't stop by itself. You have to stop it. If you don't, you know, it starts bouncing. Right. See? It's not steady. So what you see here, uh, I move the bow with little pressure or no pressure, fast, and catch it with pressure. Mm -hmm. Like that. So it takes a little bit of time. And so therefore this Boeing is not a very not a very popular Boeing and we seldom use it except for a few notes here and there. What we do instead is we most likely play more than one of these on the same bow because at least we don't have to change the direction of the bow, which makes it much faster. But it's, it's a hell of a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. So that would be the staccato and the speak, uh, the staccato and the Mart martelli, martelli being the mother of all staccato bowings. Uh, we were talking about a minute ago, the uh, repeated dombos mm -hmm. belongs into this category. It is a martelli bowing. Yeah. Except I'm lifting it at the end, otherwise right. I could never come back. So it's a hybrid Boeing. It begins as a as a martelli, lots of speed, but instead of stopping, I'm lifting it. Okay. And as you notice, it rings. The bow has two functions: make sound and kill sound. The same bow that made your sound kills the sound. As soon as I start, dead, rings. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, these constant dumbbells, one of the many reasons it's so popular is because it rings. You would have a certain, uh, uh, certain rest between the notes like. And usually you use quite a bit of bow that gives it not just the volume, but also an accent at the beginning. It begins with a, you know. Right. See? Yeah. Normally, when we play a legato, we try to learn just like an airplane, you know, at a, at, at a very shallow angle. Like, Here, the dumbo, it is much more, uh, much closer to a 90 degree angle. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's one we can mark. Yeah, yes. But don't mark much more because, right. because chances are it's going to be changed anyway. Now, with what you've just played, the staccato and the martelet, yeah. yes. one thing that I think is important to note is that the bow is basically starting and ending on the string though. Correct? That is correct, yes. That is the definition. This is like of on, the, on the string bowing still. That is a 100% on the string bowing. Start from the string, ends on the string. Okay. Now the bouncing bow. Mm -hmm. Okay, where the, the bound, the, there is two, two species of this bouncing bow. One of them, the entire bow, hair, and bow bounces, like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it can be done pretty much throughout the entire length of the bow. You have to help at some point because the bow doesn't, obviously doesn't bond here. That, as it, and here you have to help, as you see, I'm helping with my arm. And the other version of it is when the bow hair stays <coughs> on the string and the bow stick bounces, watch. See, the bow hair stays. And that's uh, uh, called, uh, by the way, everything is called in French because the whole Boeing technique comes from France. So, sautiller à la corde, which is uh, bouncing on the string. And the, the, the two Boeings, the, the, 
with the bow hair on the string and the bow hair off the string, I would compare it like walking versus running. Mm -hmm. You can only walk that fast, but you can also run that only that slow. You cannot run very slowly. Mm -hmm. So these are the the the, the sautier a la corde would be a fast moving passage bowing. Mm -hmm. You could not play because then it stays on the string. It won't get off. Right. What I what I've noticed is naturally at certain tempos, even if it's marked yeah. completely on or if someone yeah. specified on, yeah. it ends up being this little yeah. off thing that yeah. it's, it, 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 that's a good thing because especially in, when you have a when you have a, a passage played by thirty people, mm -hmm. a, suddenly instead of hearing eight separate notes, you are going to hear one. Uh, so that's that's why in, in orchestra you very often be. You know, you would use this kind of bowing. It's a very orchestra kind of bowing. But in so, in if you were, you could use this bowing, but that would not be very effective in a group. So let's just do a quick recap okay. of the the three types. We've got the legato. <laughs> So the bow does not leave the string. Does not leave the string, and there is no uh, sunlight between the right. notes. And it can change direction as you can. And that's the default with no notation. If no added, notation. That would be the default. So we've got okay. the legato, then we have the staccato. Staccato. Now, the staccato type of bowing, once again, it starts from the string ends on the string, the bow is moved fast and stopped between each and every note and the, between the stop and the next start is rest. And then... The bouncing. The bouncing bow. But the bouncing bowing is, is exactly what it is it's supposed to be. The bow does bounce. The, you actually... It's funny enough, you know how kids uh, learn how to bounce the bow. They hold the bow with these two fingers and... They, drop the bow and they learn how to how to catch it with the little finger which is mm -hmm. uh, it, this is how we balance the bow you know here right and then so my bow actually is pivoted between my middle finger and thumb and it bounces and as i'm moving it during the low point of its dropping the bow contacts the string and mm -hmm. it comes back from the string because it's has this elasticity. It stays in contact with the string very briefly. It can be done everywhere on the bow and it has two flavors. One of them, the whole bow bounces and in the other one only the stick bounces, funny as it sounds. And that's called the sautier à la corde. Like so. And I mentioned also briefly that the bouncing bow is the fastest bow stroke you can do on a, on a violin, faster than the detaché, except for the tremolo. Right. But if you attempt the tremolo everywhere, anywhere other than at, at or near the tip, it's going to take off. So it's uh, in, in, indeed going to become a bouncing bow by itself.